Hi everyone, Andy here, and in this video I want to share my experience with Panadoc after 1500 days of use. I've been using Panadoc on a weekly basis for at least four and a half years, supporting a team of five people that use Panadoc to send proposals and other documents on a daily basis. We have sent over 6,000 documents during this period of time, so in this video I'm going to go over the things I like and I don't like, as well as the feedback I got from the other users. Alright, let's get started. First, let me go over how we use Panadoc. One of my clients is a roofing company that has four Panadoc users on the sales team, plus another users in operations. So we use Panadoc to send any documents that require a client signature. During the sales process, the sales rep sends proposals either for roof installations, roof repairs, or other additional services like gutter installations. On the operations side, we send change orders that need to be signed before we can continue with the work. When we started using Panadoc, I was the only one sending all the documents, but with time, as the team got bigger, I gave the sales and operations team access to Panadoc while I transitioned to an admin role. So over the last few years, I have learned a lot about Panadoc and here's my experience. The number one feature we use is templates, given that we send similar documents over and over again. We have more than 20 templates depending on the type of work we do, the materials being installed on the roof, and also some other templates like, for example, for change orders. We also use Zoho CRM, which integrates very well with Panadoc. In the templates, we have tokens that allow the CRM to transfer information from the deal to the Panadoc document. This is super helpful because the information doesn't have to be entered twice. We can also see any documents related to the deal in the CRM. Once the template is generated, the sales rep can customize it depending on the job requirements and can edit the price table, which is the second most important feature for us. The price table is fully customizable, so we can add new rows or sections, making it really easy for the client to understand our pricing. We can also make rows optional, so we can price items in several categories and then the client can select the one they want. So there is no need to revise the proposal to edit the price. You can also allow the client to change item quantities, but we rarely use this feature. The price table is linked to the catalog where you can add items with descriptions, price and pictures, and then you can just type a few letters and the items will come up on the table. This is also helpful because each roof is different and we need to add different items to the proposals. Another feature that is really nice to have is a content library. You can create content items that you can use on your documents. For example, you can create different signature areas and use one or the other depending on the document. You could use the content library to create documents from scratch each time and avoid using templates, but it would take you too much time. So the best way is to use a combination of templates and content items. Another reason why I like the library is because when I need to edit all the templates, for example, if we need to change terms and conditions, I can edit the library item and then add it to each template. But I wish the library item was global, so when you edit the item, it would automatically change it inside each template. I requested this feature to Pandadoc a few years ago, but they haven't added it yet. It is possible to customize your documents with your own branding, adding your logo and custom colors, as well as changing some other colors like the table headers and the text color and adding images and videos as well. I think it is important to have similar branding across all the materials you send to your clients. Signing order is another feature that we use in almost all our documents. It allows us to choose what's a signature order when the document requires multiple signatures to be completed. In our case, the client signs the document first and then the sales rep gets a notification so he can sign as well. In the apps and integrations tab, you can find the ads on store and it will allow you to add or remove features from Pandadoc. For example, if you don't need the feature approvals, you can remove it right here. Also, you will see the CRM integrations tab that lists all the CRMs that work with Pandadoc, as well as some payment getaways and other apps like Zapier. We use Zapier to automatically upload all the documents we send to a Google Drive folder so the rest of the company can access those documents without having a Panadoc user. This integration also uploads signed documents. So those are all the things we like about Panadoc. Before we continue, if you are enjoying the video so far, please click the like button. It helps the channel a lot and I would really appreciate it. Also, if you would like to try out Panadoc, I will leave a link in the description. 
I wanted to briefly mention some features that we don't use. There is a way to charge your clients right from Panadoc, setting up a payment getaway like Stripe, but we don't use it because we invoice our clients with our financial software. You also have the option to create forms that will input information directly in a template and then the person can sign the document directly, but we don't use that feature because our sales reps are in charge of generating their proposals. Another feature we don't use is workflows that turns on an approval process in case you would like to review the documents before the sales reps send them. The last things I want to go over are the things that we don't like or don't work properly. If you need to complete a document manually because maybe your client signed a printed proposal, you have to search for the document in Pandadoc, but instead of opening the document from the result that shows on the bar, you have to press enter. Then you have to click on the three dots and then click on change status. The way it should work is that you open the document and then you change the status from the document. This is a minor thing, but it's been like that since 2017. The dashboard is a feature we find irrelevant because we track all our sales in our CRM. This might be helpful if you don't have a CRM, but for most businesses, it is not going to be helpful. Also, the numbers are not 100% accurate because we send some contracts that are based on a time and material charges, so they don't include a total cost. But when this is accounted in Panadoc, the value of the proposal is zero. In the CRM, we update the price once we charge the client. Another feature we don't use is the chat available in each document. I think only a handful of people have sent us a message using the chat, and like I said, we sent over 6,000 documents. Our clients prefer to communicate via email or phone call. Something else we have noticed that sometimes it doesn't work is the indicator that shows if a document has been viewed or not. Some documents were marked as sent, meaning that the client didn't open them yet, but when we reached out to the clients, they said they did open the documents. Overall, we really like Pandadoc. It has been working really well for us and we're planning to keep using it. There are a few things we would like them to improve, but there are minor issues compared to the benefits it brings to our table. All right, guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions. I will leave other videos about Pandadoc in the description down below. Thanks for watching.